Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm so happy to be with you here tonight. It is my weekly Facebook Live. I come to you every week on Thursday, and I come at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Actually, we're in Central have we done the clocks? Yeah, we're, I guess we're in Central Daylight Savings Time now. I can't keep track of that, that's for sure. But it is 7 p.m. Central, and um, I do all kinds of fun things here. So I like to show you things I'm working on and demonstrate something. Once in a while I do a swap parade, but usually I'm stamping something with you. And I can see I am on camera. Speaking of swap parades, I actually have a few swaps here I was going to share with you, and I meant to a week or two ago. Hello, Corinne and Kim. Thank you for being here, and thank you for sharing my video. It helps me so much. You guys know that when you comment here, you go into my drawing. I give away something for each one of my videos. Hello, Karen from Missouri. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Tasha. Wow, we've already got a good group um, that is assembling. So a couple of things. I'm going to kind of peer into Christmas a little bit and share with you one of the cards we're going to be making at my uh, in-person um, Saturday card class. So every month I do a card class here in San Antonio. I try to do it towards the end of the month, but yeah, it's, it's kind of been all over the show with my travel schedule, and I appreciate the uh, patience of my my people who come, some of them been coming for years. And um, the Saturday that I'm doing it this time is on the 29th because I'm leaving again <laughs> Sunday afternoon. Um, I'll be at church Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, I will be heading out to North Carolina with my husband because we are going to uh, go visit his sister and her husband and Facebook is doing something weird on me here on the computer again. Hopefully I haven't lost the feed because in my, um, in my phone, it's showing just fine. So I always like to look on the computer as well to make sure, because I can only see a little bit in my phone. Okay, yeah, we're still there. So I wanted to um, do a card that's holiday-ish uh, but not full-on red, green, you know, Santa. So Tasha is excited about Christmas cards. Yeah, I am too. I will say, when you make a lot of Christmas cards, you kind of have to start in the summer. And either that or you're going to be up all night for like weeks in the fall. And also, I mean, here in Texas, it's hotter than, oh, it's hotter than Hades. And so this kind of helps us peer into that time of year when, Everything is um, special. Everything is special. And uh, so we're going to peer into Christmas a little bit with Perched in a Tree. Um, I did want to point out this is, a, um, this is a stamp set and die set that carried over from last year. Now you can see the dies. Um, I was actually sharing about these dies. You actually, this is, this is those dies that look like you're peering through the woods. And um, the dies almost, you don't almost even, the bird punches out the bird stamp. But other than that, the dies really stand alone. So even if you're not into the stamps, I would highly recommend um, the dies. Having said that, the stamps, you get some really awesome greetings and this gorgeous bird that you can do some really fun things with. And yes, Jeanette said, look at that nice full figured bird. Nice rounded bird. And depending on how you color this bird, he can be a whole host of things. Now, you could use this to color the bird. Um, I like to color him a little bit. So this is my die that I'm gonna use because we're gonna punch him out. And I did wanna also point out, Perched in a Tree is on page 43 of the annual catalog. This is actually one of the stamp sets that was just on sale this week. Uh, hopefully you got it if you didn't already have it. This shows you in the catalog, you see how that's kind of um, got kind of a buff color? That tells you that there are dies that cut out those two stamps. Now it also tells you that it coordinates with the Aspen Tree dies. When this first came out, it was a bundle, which means that you get 10% off. 
But normally with Stampin' Up!, once something has been out in a publication, if it carries over into the next publication, the bundle price doesn't hold. You buy them separately. So, you know, I like to, when I can, I like to purchase early. I realize we all have budget, budgetary constraints. We all have to stay within our budget. Um, I'm going to pair this with uh, these new, hey, Yolanda, I'm glad you're here. <clears throat> These are the brand new um, snowflakes. These are called adhesive back snowflakes. I love these. These are in the online exclusive. So you won't find them in a catalog. You won't find them in a flyer. You'll just find them online. I love these. There's actually two sheets. So the first sheet, you have all the large size snowflake. These are adhesive back. So you have copper, gold, and white. And then on the second sheet, you have medium and small. So we're going to be using that. And, um, did I bring my card kit over here? I did not. Hang on one second. Okay. So we are going to go with a very neutral color palette. We're using crumb cake for our card base. And this is exactly how the cards come for my Saturday card class. We've already been prepping this because I'm leaving <laughs> on Sunday and I won't be coming back until Friday and then the next day I have card class. So we've already been prepping for this. So this is how your card kit comes. And you can see I've taken a piece of, a piece, a piece of basic white cardstock that has been run through the, um, the music notes die, not die, embossing folder and for some reason, I keep misplacing my, my bone folder. So this is just a standard eight and a half by five and a half crumb cake. This is basic white. And I will say something I do prefer to do is when I'm adhering um, dry embossed pieces, and that's what you call this when it goes through the die cutting machine um, with an embossing folder. It's called dry embossing as opposed to heat embossing, which is where you use the heat gun and the powder and all that cool stuff. I do actually prefer to use this um, because I feel like it kind of gets into the grooves better. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to stamp our greeting and hmm, all the stamps are in the bucket. ducks in a row but uh, but I will say I made a stellar dinner tonight and it was really quick so um, I made pot roast tonight which sounds a little bit strange in the middle of summer but um, that was kind of what I was hungry for I looked in the freezer for what I was going to cook for dinner and I wanted something really plain and I had found a pot roast on sale and I had carrots and potatoes in the pantry and went okay that's gonna be dinner and you know what I did I've never done this before but I used my pressure cooker. So my son, my chef's son, got me a really, really nice, really flash pressure cooker, I think a year ago at Christmas. And um, I used to use a pressure cooker quite a lot when I was younger. And, um, but you know, if you get out of a habit, you forget how to use it. And of course, you know, they've improved them. But um, I've never cooked a pot roast in there. It only took an hour in there. Well. It took an hour once it came up to, you know, the, once it got to its pressure. But in an hour, I had a really nice scrumptious dinner on the table. And I mean, as much as it's super hot outside, it's <laughs> very temperature controlled inside. Hey Velma, I'm glad you're here. Now I am inking up this bird with early espresso ink, and that's what I used on my die cut as well for my little greeting and oh no okay Tasha you have an instapot um instant pot and that's just kind of the modern version of a pressure cooker now I'm using my um my trusty blender pen if you don't have a blender pen you need a blender pen these come in a package of three and I think they were ten dollars forever I think they might be 12 or 13 now but this is something that was very standard when I first started stamping. You just, you learned to use a um, 
the blender pen because you see how it's bleeding out the color for me? So all I've done is I've stamped my bird with early espresso ink and now I'm coming in here and I'm just blending out everywhere that ink is. I can grab that and pull it. And so now I have this nice soft color without using anything except my ink pad and this blender pen. You need a blender pen. Like I said, they come in a package of three. That package of three will last you probably five years. So um, I love, love, love blender pens. I wanted to have a really neutral look so you can kind of see where I'm going. Now I am gonna run this through my cut and emboss and this is from the, um, what are they called? This is from the Nested Essentials. Awesome, awesome set of dies that everybody needs. Now I'm gonna close this up because I don't need this again and I don't wanna get myself in trouble. So that's gonna go there. And there is my die. So this is super, super simple, but it's very elegant. You know, when you have this very neutral, um, when you have this very neutral background or very neutral um, color scheme, you end up with a very elegant look. Well, actually, I think when you do this all neutral, you can go, you can end up with a real country look or you can end up with a really elegant look, either one. Now I'm gonna use these edge pieces, which are some of my favorites from my Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to pop this down near the bottom because I wanna have plenty of room to put my bird and the branch. So this is just crumb cake, it's basic white and night of navy. Now you could do this in vanilla and it would look really, really pretty as well. It would be a lot softer. Vanilla just kind of softens everything. So there's my let heaven and nature sing. Now I'm gonna come back and put some, put some um, snowflakes there in a minute, but let's go ahead and put this down. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my branch about like so, so that my bird, maybe I should, Let's cut him out first. Let's get all our pieces before we start trying to place this. Okay, so I have my mini cut emboss. Now, I do think that when you use, I'm not sure, when you use, this is the largest die, I think you might have to use the big machine. No, I think it goes through. Interesting. Um, I am going to cut out my little bird. So, hey, Laura, I'm glad you are here. Welcome, welcome. Good evening to you. Now remember, whenever you're using your mini machine, you want to zigzag your plates. You want to have the one in the middle going, um, you know, where it's shorter and having these two meet. If you have them all three meet together, yeah, you're gonna have some challenges getting that through. So that is one of the kind of top tips of using the mini machine. The mini machine is just so convenient. Okay, now I'm trying to work around my phone here. Now, do I need a little piece of, um, let's see, do I have, ha ha, look what I have right here. I'm gonna grab a little post-it note just to be on the safe side because I don't wanna to have to run this through a second time because I messed up. Now that is going to work. Let's put this little guy down like so. And again, this is just, um, this is early espresso ink on basic white cardstock that's been blended out with a blender pen. So that's what's giving me that pretty, pretty color. Okay. Now, it's going to shift on my table thing. is is slick, so it doesn't have any um, grip thing underneath me, so it's kind of sliding every which way, but that's okay. This is live TV. Okay. So now... Let's put these plates over here. There's my pretty little bird. All punched out. A lot easier than fussy cutting. 
I am not a fan of fussy cutting. I avoid it if I can. Sometimes you just have to, but I do avoid it when I can. So now I'm gonna put my branch like so and put my bird like so. Now you see, because the bird's pretty big, I wanna make sure that I have enough room. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle that branch like so. So let's go ahead and put just a little tiny bit. Again, when you're using your liquid glue, the key is to use it very sparingly because otherwise it'll just kind of splodge and go everywhere and make a big mess, which I am not a fan of. Okay, so now let's do this. And I am going to come in here and cut that off. Okay, Karen says the uh, feed is freezing up on her. It's not on my end. So you might want to refresh your screen. That will oftentimes do the trick. Now I am going to pop him up on dimensionals and I'm gonna trim this over here. So let's pop him up a little bit. Let me know if anybody else is freezing up because um, if you are, it's probably Facebook and it's probably might even be the feed because I don't know about where you are, but man, it's hot here. I don't know if that affects the feed, but it, okay, Velma, you're good. Okay. So again, just kind of refresh your feed and hopefully that's going to make it all good. So now we are going to put this little bird, look at his little feet. Aren't they cute? They look like they're on the, um, they look like they're right on the branch. So now I can just come along here and snip. So that's flush with the side there. So now I have a very sweet, very neutral card. And honestly, I, I could give this to a man or a woman. And uh, so Corinne, yeah, it's the 12th day. You've had the 100, yeah, 100 and, whew, 103 or higher, wow. Yeah, we're 100 or over every day. I think we're at 12 or 13 days. We're gonna, I think we're gonna hit a record, which is not the kind of records I really wanna hit, but you know, there we are. Now, I think, I, I think any of these are gonna look pretty, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for the gold and I think I'm gonna add the large one first. I'm gonna add one of each because I've got small, medium, and large. So let's take the large first. Oopsie. And we'll add that here, like so. And then we'll do medium. And let's do medium, like this. And then we're gonna do small. And we'll do small, like this. Now, honestly, the snowflakes look really pretty just the way they are. However, I do love, these are actually sequins, and I love to fill that hole with a little, a little bit of bling. So this is going to add, again, that little bit of elegance. So you remember I told you when you have this crumb cake and white and um, early espresso color scheme, you can go you can go really country with it or you can go really elegant with it. And this is definitely going elegant. If we wanted to go country, you know, we could probably like sponge the edges, we could rough them up a little bit and do some different things that would give a little bit more of that country feel. So this is a super, super quick and easy card, Let Heaven and Nature Sing. Honestly, I mean, it just, you can put any kind of greeting on the inside, Christmas greeting, anything you want. So there's other greetings in the stamp set. So I could say wishing you abundant joy and peace. I could say your kindness. I mean, I could say any of these things or I'm going to just leave it like this. Now my friend Jeanette that's on here, a lot of times she will leave her greetings off, even off the front. And then when she gets ready to mail it, then she will add the greeting. For this one, I think I could just leave it. And then when I get closer to time to use it, then I can decide what I want on the inside. So, I mean, this is all neutral, super, super simple, um, but made really special by just a couple of little details. You know, the stitched label here, 
Uh, the dyes, you know, are nice. I love these snowflakes, seriously love the snowflakes. And this to me, if you don't have the music um, embossing folder, even if you're not a big like musician person, I think it just, it's a classic. I think everybody should have it. And then we did a little bit of coloring just with a blender pen. So this is one ink, a little bit of die cutting, a little bit of stamping, voila, boom, done. So that is our card for tonight. I will put this on my blog. I have a couple of uh, blog posts for this week. So you'll make sure you go to sweetstamper.com and see what I've been sharing on my blog. And um, I had, let's see, I think I did a birthday card on Wednesday that was something I had shown on Facebook Live, but I think I did something on Monday because I was part of a blog hop on both those days. And I think I did something different. So can you remember what I put up at the moment? I did want to mention to you, hey, Valerie, I'm glad you're here. Um, I've got a couple of stamping in-person things coming up. So this is one of the cards for my Saturday card class, the end of July. And then here in San Antonio, I do host a retreat and it is October 12 to 15 this fall. I do have people who come in from out of state. So it's at a really nice Drury Plaza Hotel. So the Drury Hotels, the plazas are the largest of the Drury's and it's, it's a very nice size. We have a, a killer uh, crafting space. Uh, you get a six foot table for the whole weekend. You can just tuck in, have a great time, make new friends, meet up with old friends. Uh, we have a lot of fun. So um, I actually do have a, um, a separate private Facebook group for my retreats. If you're interested in that, just put it in the comments and I will go through there and I will invite you into that Facebook group. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll just post the, um, maybe I'll just post the link and anybody who wants to join can. Um, so Cheryl is my retreat uh, co-host and we bring our stamps, inks, and tools so that you can travel light. Now, let me tell you, some people bring in whole carts of stuff and that's fine. They bring, I mean, they bring their Cricut machines, they bring all their blends, they bring like umpteen different projects they're gonna work on, that's okay. But this is there as kind of a lending library and then we spoil you all weekend with goodies, gifts and TLC. Okay, so Velma has already, she just booked her hotel room, good for you. You know, I need to check to make sure I've done mine because I have been known to be hosting this event and forget to book my own hotel room. Um, you don't have to stay at the hotel if you live locally. Some people just go home, but I will say, when you stay in that retreat bubble, it's a real, um, it's a real pampering, girls pampering weekend. Um, you can also add a Thursday option. And so there is my um, link for this. I will link it when I, uh, when I go in and edit this. And I think that's all I was going to, oh, I was going to show you a really quick swap parade. So I hosted a silver retreat for my silver and above team members. And that was in, was that in June too? Lord have mercy. No, it was in May. I've had a busy few months. And um, so we met at a, um, I reserved an Airbnb, um, house and we all stayed there together and uh, so we did a shoebox swap and a shoebox swap is where you bring enough for everybody to make your card so this is a card that I shared with everybody I wanted them to try out this new quilts I can't remember think of the die um, so this was my card this was from Patsy Asher so these are all my team members beautiful beautiful projects this card do I remember who did this Ay, ay, ay. I think this might have been Cheryl Peary. I think. They don't have names on them. This was Judy Allen. Really love all that layering here. I mean, these are, we kind of change things up. Look at the little, how he's hanging down from the brick branch. This was a really fun card to make. This was a really pretty card. This is from Sarah Cuoma. Uh, she lives up uh, north of Austin. I love this. Coffee with a friend is like happiness in a cup. This was a fun card. These were all really fun cards to make. This is from Jill. And Jill is also up in the North Austin area. 
And then this card, <laughs> this is from my teammate, um, Susan Rutherford. And you know, I had been eyeing this stamp set when, the, when it first came out in the catalog. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. And, but I had so many other stamp sets that I was, that I was purchasing. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to just wait. Well, once I made this card, look at the Wink of Stella on there. I just thought I, I need this stamp set. So when we had the stamp sale this week, Softly Sketched was at the top of my list. This was a fun watercolor card. There's my moth that I demonstrated here one night with you guys. This is from um, Melissa Thomas cool cool card lots of fun technique stuff there and then this is from jennifer jenkins you were born to be fabulous not perfect and she is fabulous stamper so this is like the perfect um the perfect stamp set for her so that's my little mini swap parade from a recent event and let me just check these um check these comments real quick to see if I missed anything. Don't forget to make a comment if you are here and you will go into my drawing and this will go into my blog and I will also download this to YouTube. So if you are here, I really appreciate you hearting my, uh, my little video here and I really also appreciate if you are on YouTube to give me a thumbs up and a subscribe on YouTube as well as Facebook. So that is it for tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget, I will be at sweetstamper.com uh, with this project. Hopefully, it will be on there by tomorrow morning. And uh, you can watch the replay here to see how all of this comes together with quickness and ease. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care and God bless.